We offer just two of those itineraries, a seven night and a 10 night, and they're both a round trip out of Seattle. And I would say the seven night is our most popular. Similarly, you know, it's a, the ideal length for most passengers. For Puget Sound cruises and Alaskan departures out of Juneau, we don't have an included pre-night package, but guests can purchase a premium pre-cruise package. And this will include one night hotel stay at a centrally located hotel in Seattle, breakfast the morning of the embarkation, and a narrated tour of Seattle, visiting such highlights as Pike Place Market, Elliott Bay, and much more. The tour will conclude at the ship where they'll find their luggage in their stateroom, ensuring a seamless boarding process. So diving into our seven night Puget Sound and San Juan Islands cruise, uh, you'll find similar natural beauty to our Alaskan itineraries, along with unique ports uh, of call uh, that your clients really are going to love. Our first port of call is going to be Anacortes, which is located between Seattle and Vancouver on the beautiful Fidalgo Island. Uh, this town is known as the gateway to the San Juans. Anacortes is also home to Deception Pass, which is one of the most photographed places in the Northwest, and you do see it here. Guests can see the pass, pass from the water or explore on easy walking trails along the shoreline. There's also plenty of time to visit the town, just a few steps from our dock. We do offer a complimentary shore excursion here called the Anacortes Experience. This is a walking tour where your clients will see colorful murals depicting the history and the city, uh, history of the city and the town center, just to name a few. Additional tour options here are both premium, which is, uh, as a reminder, means guests need to pay for those on board. Um, one option is the Deception Pass jet boat tour. So on a comfortable jet boat, guests will enjoy 360 degrees of unobstructed views of Deception Pass Bridge, um, which is a nat national historic landmark. Passengers on this tour will enjoy hear hearing the tales of characters who navigated these waters, in addition to seeing the old prison rock quarry, Deception Island, and probably a bald eagle's nest or two. The next port of call is going to be Friday Harbor on San Juan Island, which is a quaint, tranquil, and charming walkable seaport. The island has diverse topography with pebbled beaches, large mountains, and lush valleys, and the town has small, friendly stores and restaurants. Here, your clients can take a premium tour to the Whale Museum, where they'll learn about the natural history of these amazing marine mammals, with a special focus on the orcas that live in the waters of the San Juan Islands. Just a fun fact, the crew of the American Spirit, one of the ships that cruises in this region, adopted an orca from the L-Pod and named it Spirit uh, through the orca adoption program supported by the Whale Museum here. We also offer a whale watching tour, which is a signature tour, meaning it must be pre-booked. For anyone who's not done a whale watching tour before, this is really a, a must do. It's a wonderful excursion to partake in. Uh, the San Juan Islands are considered to be one of the best places in the world to view orca whales. And this three and a half hour tour takes guests right into their natural habitat so they can get up close and personal. Up next, we'll cruise to Port Angeles. So from here, guests really do have many options for shore tours, including a trip to Canada. Um, and so same thing here as the Skagway tours where um, guests on board don't need a passport, but if they did wanna take the Buchart Gardens or Victoria City tour, they would need one. Um, if they decide to stay in Port Angeles, they can take a walking tour of Port Angeles, which is a very charming town filled with much history. Its strategic location made it a center for trade for both indigenous peoples and for the Europeans who came after. We've also have a couple options that include the Olympic National, National Park. Uh, and the park really does have some of the largest remnants of the ancient forest left in the country with unique flora and fauna. So really a unique experience. Um, and our signature excursion in this port is the uh, Buchart Gardens and Victoria City Tour. Uh, and of course, that does need to be pre-booked. Guests take a scenic ferry ride across the Strait of San Juan to uh, beautiful Victoria, British Columbia. And there they take a bus tour of the city before heading to Buchart Gardens. And the entire park is gorgeous with flowers, adorned archways, um, stone paths, gentle streams, and a colorful array of flowers. I've included a picture of uh, some fall foliage here, um, kind of picking up on the tones of the season. So from uh, Port Angeles, uh, we'll head to Port Townsend, which is also on the Olympic Peninsula. 
The city is called the city of dreams because of the early speculation that the city would be the largest harbor on the west coast of the U.S., but that changed with the railroad, uh, and then, um, you know, as soon as the railroad started to dominate uh, as a form of transportation of people and goods, um, so it turned into sort of a quieter, more peaceful town. In Port Townsend, guests have a few premium excursions to choose from, one being the historic Port Townsend Exploration, where a guide in Victoria-era dress greets the guests at the ship and takes them through the historic area downtown. The guides will go into detail about the many colorful characters that helped build the city. Another tour option is the Fort Worden State Park, which is actually what you're looking at here. Um, and that is uh, on the northwestern side of what's considered the Triangle of Fire, which is a trio of forts built to protect the Puget Sound at the turn of the last century. And highlights include the Point Wilson Lighthouse, uh, which is built to help friendly warships navigate home, and the parade grounds where military drills and training were once held. On to Paulsbill, Washington next, which is known as Little Norway, and it was settled in 1892 by Norwegian loggers and fishermen. There are two premium tours in Paulsbo. The first option is the walking tour where an expert guide from Paulsbo Historical Society greets passengers at the dock and takes them through the historic downtown area. The second option is the Suquamish Museum, which opened in 2012 and features the story of the Suquamish Museum, the most well-known being Chief Seattle, who is the leader of the Suquamish and the Duwamish people. The highlight of the museum is a uniquely designed cedar timeline depicting the tribe's history from the beginning of the last ice age to current times. Really some striking art to see at that location. Midday, we'll depart for Seattle, where we'll spend the remainder of the day. Guests do have an option to take part in the premium guided tour of the city if they didn't take that tour to start their cruise. Um, of course, the highlight being Pike Place Market. Um, and that evening will be docked in Seattle and guests will disembark the following day. So I just kind of want to walk you through some of the amenities available on all of our American Cruise Lines cruises, as well as the ships that cruise this itinerary. Um, so we have two small ship coastal cruisers. These are the class of ship um, that cruises on the coastal waters. So just for a little um, background here, these ships will cruise um, kind of close to the coast, sort of a benefit of cruising with us that you're always able to see land. Um, the American Spirit on the left is a 100 passenger ship, ship built, built in 2005. And the American Constellation is a 175 passenger ship built in 2017. The, the Spirit remains in the Puget Sound from spring to fall, doing only the seven night itinerary. While the Constellation starts the spring season in the Puget Sound, then travels to Alaska in June and returns to the Puget Sound in September, doing the 10 night cruises and the 14, 14 night cruises, as well as a few of the seven night cruises to begin and end the season. So these ships were built in our shipyard in Chesapeake, Maryland, and they both have elevators midship, which is really important to remember. We do have a clientele of semi-retired to retired um, uh, audience, a more mature audience. So these ships are built with that clientele in mind. So it's very easy to maneuver around the ships. There's no stairs, um, a really relaxing journey on board. So um, we do have gorgeous, spacious staterooms with hotel-sized bathrooms. They're averaging around 300 square feet. All of our staterooms have interior entrances with an exterior view. So even if a stateroom doesn't have a balcony, it'll still have a gorgeous, large picture window. Staterooms with balconies are private. So there's nobody milling around in front of their view. As you can kind of see, uh, that is a private balcony. There's no room for anybody to walk around. Um, if you have folks who are tra traveling in a group, we can always take that balcony down so they can kind of share that space. Um, but unless they elect to have that balcony taken down, they will have that private balcony. Again, all of our staterooms um, do have hotel-sized bathrooms. They have complimentary Wi-Fi and twice daily room service. Important to note, gratuity is included on, in the price of the cruise. So you are not expected to tip our staff aboard. Gratuity is included in the price of the cruise. Um, so this is an image of one of the, or one of the staterooms on board the American Constellation. So after your clients are done enjoying each port of call, they'll um, embark once again and enjoy our complimentary cocktail party every evening. Uh, with that cocktail party, uh, beer, wine, top shelf cocktails, and champagne are all included in the price of the cruise. Um, and that 
party typically starts at about 5.30 p.m., which brings me to my next point. Um, as your, your passengers are kind of enjoying that cocktail party, getting to know folks on board, um, they're invited to join us for our open seated dining time at their leisure. So we really only have the one dining time. It starts at cocktail hour, so somebody's you know, super voracious, they can certainly leave and, and uh, sit down for dinner. I just did want to quickly note, we do have uh, locally sourced uh, hors d'oeuvres during the cocktail party, but if folks are ready for dinner, they're welcome to join us. There's no uh, assigned seats on board either, so you can kind of sit with whomever you want. We're really trying to foster kind of a camaraderie on board, so we really find that people really enjoy the opportunity to meet other like-minded travelers, both in the cocktail hour and in the open seated dining time. Um, something I did neglect to mention, we do have single designated staterooms in all of our ships. So for those singles, this is exceptionally, um, you know, important to have uh, no nobody who's kind of like seated along uh, just with the two of them. Say if there's a couple traveling, everybody's kind of mingling and getting to know each other. So those singles will be super comfortable on board, both um, in that cocktail hour and for those open seated dining times. Um, all the dining and beverage amenities I'm mentioning today are available on all of our sailings and all of our ships. So there's no confusing packages to add on to your client sailing. Our meals are regionally sourced and inspired. So for these regions, I included a beautiful picture of some delicious salmon. It's gonna be a lot of delicious seafood on board. So we're really looking to give your clients a nice taste of the region. Um, beer and wine is included at lunch and dinner. Uh, for all of our cruises, again, um, regardless of which ship you're on, that is going to be consistent. Um, and again, uh, really fresh food. These are not uh, a buffet. So if your clients have any dietary restrictions, say I'm looking at this right now, and we have somebody who's say allergic to asparagus, um, you can certainly uh, indicate that in your client's booking. So my best recommendation to you is just let your crew specialist know whomever is booking you. Um, hey, I'm, you know, my client's allergic to onions, they're vegan, gluten-free. It's very easy for us to accommodate that as we're sourcing these um, ingredients each port of call. Uh, we are really seeking to give them kind of an immersive experience and the meals are part of that. Um, but one of the benefits for that is that the, the menu is a little bit more flexible. We're really able to accommodate any dietary restrictions that, uh, that your clients might need. So again, beer and wine included at lunch and dinner, locally sourced fresh cuisine, not, um, it's a, ordered off of a menu, it's not a buffet, so we can make any dietary restrictions um, known to the, to the ship. We so we bring acclaimed local entertainment on board each night, which really helps bring the destinations to life even more. In this region, it might be the Anacords, which is a local music, uh, music group who sing wonderful harmonies in acapella style. And these gentlemen's have, uh, gentlemen have been singing together for over 50 years. Um, another night, we have the Fidalgo Swing, a four-person band that aims to transport guests to an era when swing was king. Um, and we do also have award-winning onboard enrichment, where an educator, historian, lecturer, or guy will focus on the natural history of the area, current events, and settlement history. I can't tell you enough how popular this aspect of our cruise is. Um,